fluid to the external surface of catalyst. Okay. External mass transfer of reactant from the bulk fluid to the external surface of the catalyst. Catalyst pellet. Tak kisahlah bentuk apa pun. Uh, spheres ke, cylinder ke. So, this is how the mass transfer uh, occur. Okay. Based on this figure. So, if you look at this figure, this is the sphere uh, catalyst. Oh, saya lupa ni kan. Alright, so this is the sphere catalyst. Okay, mana pointer. Okay, sphere catalyst. This is the bulk fluid area. So what is this area? This is the boundary layer. Okay, from the bulk fluid to the external surface. So this is the boundary layer. Yang ada uh, thickness delta with thickness delta. So, yang um, apa yang ada colour ni, dia mesti patut ada colour. Okay. So, this one, this area, okay, yang ni spheres, outside the catalyst, so this is the boundary layer. And here is your bulk fluid, either in gas phase or liquid phase. So, this boundary layer with the thickness delta. And the thickness of the boundary layer will affect on how the mass transfer occur, whether the mass transfer is fast or slow. Okay, so assume the diffusion of A, reactant A, to external surface of the catalyst is the slowest step. Okay, so it takes time for the reactant A to transfer from the bulk fluid to the external surface of catalyst. Reactant A at a bulk concentration CAB, so the concentration of reactant A at the outside of uh, catalyst ataupun at the uh, bulk uh, fluid area, we write it as CAB, okay, concentration at, of A, at bulk fluid. Uh, CA referring to the concentration of reactant A. B here is referring to the bulk fluid area. It must travel through the boundary layer with thickness of delta to the external surface of catalyst pellet with concentration CAS. So the concentration becomes as CAS. Uh, CAB at the bulk fluid, CAS at the external uh, surface. <clears throat> okay, so here bulk fluid, okay, at the bulk fluid, and CAS at the external uh, surface. Okay, at low velocity of uh, fluid over the pellet, the boundary layer across which A and B, so meaning that for uh, the reactant and the product, okay. so uh, mass diffuse is thick, resulting in small mass transfer coefficient. So meaning that if the boundary layer Okay, boundary layer delta ni is thick. Therefore, the transportation of reactant and the product is slow. So, that's why mass transfer coefficient is small. And then, mass transfer across the boundary layer is slow and limits the overall reaction. So, senang je sebenarnya kalau uh, if the thickness of the boundary layer is uh, thick, okay, and then the mass transfer of reactant and product will be slow, okay, and the mass transfer coefficient also small. So, this is the value, mass transfer coefficient ni similar to uh, the rate on how the mass transfer occurs. So, the mass transfer coefficient is small. Therefore, uh, the mass transfer of the product and reactant is slow and limits the rate of overall reaction. 
Meaning that uh, in overall reaction, overall reaction here, we need to consider for both process. Okay, reaction process and mass transfer process. So, ada dua proses yang berlaku. The first process is mass transfer. Mass transfer of the reactant to the external surface. The second um, process uh, yang berlaku is the uh, reaction of A to produce product B. Okay, and remember that even though it is porous, the reaction still occur at the external surface, the active site. So, they berlaku both inside the uh, surface of re, uh, catalyst and also at the external surface of uh, the catalyst. As long as there is a active site on the uh, catalyst, so reaction will occur. Okay, that's why we need to consider for this reaction, mass transfer reaction and also reaction to produce the product. Okay, so now uh, because um, the mass transfer is slower than the reaction to produce the product, so that's why the mass transfer will limit the, uh, will limit the overall uh, reaction okay, at the external surface. <clears throat> okay, so external resistance decrease as the particle size is decreased. So external resistance is the the rate uh, of mass transfer coefficient. Lah. Okay, mass co uh, transfer coefficient value it will decrease as the particle size decrease. So particle size ni meaning that the size of catalyst. So if you look at here, so if we increase the size of catalyst, the thickness of boundary layer will decrease. So that's why we can increase the mass transfer coefficient value. So as the fluid velocity increase, so at the same time, the fluid velocity also increase, uh, the particle diameter decrease. Uh, so yang ni, uh, kalau if we increase the velocity, so here with low velocity of fluid, but if we increase the velocity of um, apa tu, velocity of fluid at the bulk fluid, we, we also can reduce the thickness of boundary layer. Okay, sama ada we uh, increase the particle size or increase the velocity. So, both we can decrease the thickness of boundary layer. So, uh, when we increase the fluid velocity and particle diameter decreases, mass transfer coefficient increase until plateau. So, at this point, the concentration of reactant at the bulk fluid will be similar to the concentration at the external surface of catalyst. Alright, so this is how the mass transfer occur, external mass transfer occur from the bulk fluid to the external surface of catalyst. So, dia tak ada involve any calculation pun at the external surface. So we just need to consider either kalau uh, if the catalyst that we use is non-porous, yes, it, it will involve the calculation later because we want to calculate what is the rate of reaction at the external surface. So, which one is the, uh, apa, um, selain daripada uh, rate of reaction, the mass transfer uh, rate. Uh. So, later kita akan tengok mass transfer equation when we want to design uh, the reactor ataupun we want to design the reaction process. Okay, for now dia tak ada lagi calculation. Later baru kita tengok uh, the calculation involved for this part. Right. Uh, so, this is the derivation. First, we need to look at the derivation dulu. Derivation of uh, rate law equation. So, this rate law equation, we will use it when we need to design the reactor later. Okay, uh, untuk part 3 of this topic nanti. Okay, 
Okay, so at the external um, surface of the catalyst, so how the mass transfer occur and how we can relate the mass transfer with, with the rate of reaction. Right, at steady state, the rate of transport to surface equal to the rate of reaction at the surface. And usually, we assume that the reaction is first order reaction. Okay, this is the reaction occur at the external surface of catalyst. Ni, dekat bahagian ni. Okay, there is a reaction and also the mass transfer from bulk fluid to the external surface. Right, so this is the mass transfer at the external surface. So, mass transfer rate equal to the area multiply with the um, upper flux, okay, transfer flux. So, KMA, CAB minus CAS. So, this is the transfer flux. Equal to surface area multiply with the rate of reaction at the surface. So, rate reaction, uh, again, we assume the reaction is first order. Okay, so the surface area, we can... Uh, cancel out, therefore, the equation becomes so KMA CAB minus CAS equal to K double prime CAS. Okay, kenapa Y uh, is different from previous uh, rate law equation that you have learned? So, kalau tengok dekat sini, the difference only at this part. Okay, because we want to differentiate this is for the rate of surface reaction. Rate of surface reaction ataupun rate of catalytic surface reaction. Okay. So, kalau rate of catalytic reaction, you need to differentiate it with the uh, rate of homogeneous reaction. So, previously, what you have learned uh, in reaction 1, you will write the rate reaction as negative Ra equal to K. C A. So, this K is based on number of moles and concentration. Okay, the concentration of liquid for homogeneous reaction. But here, for a heterogeneous reaction, it based on the area, surface area where the reaction occur. So, that's why they can jadi uh, negative R equal to k c a s okay because we want to differentiate the reaction uh, uh between the homogeneous reaction and heterogeneous catalytic reaction so this is uh, the way you write the uh, rate law equation okay so actually this term similar with this one Okay, 4 pi r square, 4 pi r square, and this r, okay, equal to this one. So, that's why they jadi yang ni. And this is the mass transfer, okay, mass transfer from the bulk fluid to the uh, external surface of catalyst. This is the external uh, mass transfer uh, rate constant. Ataupun resistant, ataupun ayat yang sebelum ni tadi kita panggil mass transfer coefficient. Okay, KMA mass transfer coefficient. CAB concentration at the bulk fluid minus concentration at the external surface. Okay, so and then from here, okay, so... 4 pi r square, 4 pi r square, you can cancel out and then rearrange this equation as CAS, okay, from here, KMA uh, in bracket CAB minus CAS equal to K prime CAS, then rearrange, rearrange, you will get uh, as this equation, okay, and then, uh, Overall rate equation. So, if you look at this rate law, okay, rate at the surface of reaction, R equal to K prime CAS. 
So we want to eliminate this term. That's why we rearrange for CAS here. Okay. To express the rate uh, law expression at the rate law equation at the external surface or at the catalytic surface, we need to write it in terms of concentration of reactant at the bulk free. So, this CAS, we will substitute it as this equation. So, that's why from here, you will get this equation. So, K prime. Okay. So, ganti masuk je. Substitute the CAS into this red law equation. And you will get it as this equation. Okay, K prime CAS ni replace as CAB over 1 plus K prime over KMA. Okay, dapat yang ni. And then this term, we can simplify it as K effective. Okay, effectiveness, uh, effective rate constant. Okay, so remember that for... Uh, rate at the catalytic surface, we need to express it in terms of concentration of reactant at the bulk fluid. Okay, so that's why finally you will get this, you will get uh, this equation. Okay. Alright, so how to answer this question if the reaction is reaction limited what is the overall rate if the reaction is mass transfer limited what is the overall rate uh, so yeah ni i will show it uh, during the tutorial session uh, on thursday okay how to answer this uh, question on thursday Right, we will use this equation to answer this. Okay. Ah, so, then we look at the mass transfer coefficient. So, previously, yang ni kita dah tahu what is uh, the overall uh, catalytic rate uh, equation ataupun rate expression. So, we will write it in terms of this equation. Now, in this equation, we still need to define what is the value of mass transfer coefficient. How we can determine the value of mass transfer coefficient. Okay. So, for mass transfer coefficient, we can relate it with the Sherwood number. Okay. So, Sherwood number can be defined as mass transfer coefficient multiply with the characteristic length. So, yang ni, uh, ni L here, L ni characteristic length. GTH. So, it depends on the shape of catalyst that we use. Okay, let's say kalau uh, sphere catalyst, okay, sphere catalyst, the Sherwood number becomes Sherwood number equal to KMA D. Uh, dia jadi uh, diameter of catalyst. Divide with diffusivity factor. Okay, KMA SH is Sherwood number, KMA is mass transfer coefficient, D is a diameter of catalyst, DA diffusivity, okay, diffusivity coefficient. Right, so... <clears throat> Sherwood number pula, before we determine the value of KMA from this equation or from this relation, the relation, uh, apa, uh, we can define the Sherwood number 
and relate it with the mass transfer coefficient as this equation. But before that, we need to know what is the value of Sherwood number. So again, the Sherwood number also depends on the shape of catalyst. So if the shape of catalyst is flat plate, so flat plate including the film, okay, film catalyst. So we call it as a flat plate and the reaction uh, and the velocity of the liquid is lamina flow. Okay, the flow of uh, the fluid is lamina. Therefore, this is how you can calculate the Sherwood number. So you need to know what is the Renault number and Smith number. Okay, and turbulent flow. This is the equation. Okay, usually all this equation will be given. So let's say you need to calculate the Sherwood number. Therefore, uh, the formula to calculate the Renault number will be given. Sherwood number will be given. Or sometimes the value of uh, Renault number and Smith number already given. So just uh, insert it into the equation. Okay. So similar for turbulent flow fluid. So to calculate the Sherwood number for the reaction flow over flat plate. So this is the equation. So uh, the important thing that you need to know what is the shape of catalyst. Either it is a flat plate, film, ataupun um, a sphere's catalyst or a tubular catalyst. So if tubular catalyst, it, uh, the shape we call it as a tube. Lah. We can consider it as a tube. Okay? Tube, cylinder, tubular. So, uh, how we can calculate the Sherwood number? So, for lamina flow, Sherwood number automatically uh, equal to 8 over 3. So, if the shape of catalyst is in tubular or cylinder ataupun tube, Sherwood number uh, 8 over 3 for lamina flow. But, uh, if the flow is turbulent, so this is uh, the equation for you to calculate the Sherwood number. And then flow over a sphere. Uh, so usually we will use uh, ni lah, tube or cylinder uh, shape of catalyst or sphere's catalyst. So for sphere's catalyst, this is the formula. Again, we need to know the Renault number and Smith number. But for stagnant fluid, okay, Sherwood number automatically equal to 2. So why? Uh, saya highlight kan as a red color here. So this one you need to know what is the value. You need to remember what is the value. So if uh, the flow is lamina and the shape of catalyst is a cylinder, automatically Sherwood number 8 over 3. If a uh, flow over sphere and the Upper, the, fl the flow of fluid very slow or stagnant. So sometimes the uh, flow is very slow. Yang tu pun dia punya hint. Very slow. So stagnant ni very slow lah. Sherwood number equal to 2. So you will use this uh, 2 number. Either 8 over 3 or Sherwood number over 2. And insert it into the Sherwood um, apa, equation, Sherwood number equation, which is as H equal to uh, KMA uh, diameter of catalyst divide with diffusivity. So, kalau flow over sphere at stagnant fluid, Sherwood number equal to 2. Here, this is the value. Ataupun kalau flow through a tube or cylinder and lamina flow, uh, lamina flow, Sherwood number equal to 8 over 3. So just insert it into the equation. Okay. okay. Then next step is internal diffusion. Okay. Step 2, internal diffusion or pore diffusion. Okay, the reactant will flow through a pore mouth okay, to internal surface of catalyst. Okay. 
This is how the reaction occur. Reactant A diffuses from external surface of catalyst into the pellet interior where the concentration is Ca. So, tadi, at the surface of the catalyst, the concentration is CAS. So if you look at, uh, if you can look at the figure here, so CAS ni at the external surface. But inside, at the inside of catalyst, catalyst pore, okay, the internal area of catalyst, the concentration becomes CA. But the concentration gradient ni not too large. And sometimes can be negligible. Okay. But usually the concentration of a reactant at the external surface is larger than the concentration of reactant at the internal uh, surface. Okay. Okay. As A, as reactant A diffuses into pellet interior, it react with catalyst deposited on the sides of pore walls. So, in my suit, yeah, the... Uh, reactant will react at the active site of the catalyst inside the pore. Okay, for large pellet, uh, so this is uh, the effect of uh, pellet size or uh, the effect of catalyst diameter. Okay, for large pellet, longer time required for the reactant A to diffuse into interior of catalyst. Compared to the time it takes for the reaction to occur. So, meaning that the reaction of reactant A at the extern external surface, okay, much, much larger than the reaction of reactant A inside the pore. Okay, why? Because the reactant takes longer time to travel uh, into inside of the catalyst. Uh, so that's why reaction the external surface ni lagi cepat, much much faster than the reaction at the internal side. Okay. Kenapa the uh, transportation from the external surface to the inter internal surface is slow because of the size of catalyst. Okay. Thus, the reactant is only consumed near exterior surface of the pellet. Internal diffusion is limiting the reaction. Uh, so, uh, which reaction yang slow? It will become the limiting of the reaction. So, kalau tadi, if the mass transfer is slow compared to the reaction at the external surface, therefore, mass transfer from the bulk fluid, uh, we limit the reaction. But now, for the uh, internal diffusion or pore diffusion, when the trans, when the mass transfer from the external surface to the internal surface is slow compared to the reaction at the external surface, therefore, uh, pore diffusion is limiting the reaction. Okay, pore diffusion or internal diffusion will limiting the reaction. Okay, so uh, K, okay, rate constant, K prime is an overall rate constant and is a function of particle size. Overall rate constant increases as the pellet diameter decrease. Okay, why? Because if the pellet diameter decrease, pore diffusion also increase. Because of the reactant A will, uh, put the time for the reactant A to travel inside the pore will reduce. So the pore diffusion uh, no more become the limiting of the reaction. So now, uh, apa, Reaction at the external will be limiting. So, dia jadi terbalik lah if we reduce the size of the uh, catalyst. Okay, rate of pore diffusion can be written as R prime equal to K prime CAS. Again, 
CAS, we need to write it in terms of bulk rate. So you need to insert it as the previous equation. And then we multiply it with the effectivity. Okay. So this is the effectiveness or effectivity. Effectiveness. But we rarely use this equation. Kenapa? For, the, uh, for this part, okay, in this subject, internal diffusion or pore diffusion, you just need to know the theory on how the pore diffusion occurs, sahaja, not the calculation. Because to solve this uh, problem, okay, uh, pore diffusion problem, Okay, in terms of its calculation and derivation is very complex. Okay, so yeah, ni contoh why it is complex. Okay, problem in pore diffusion is the rate. Uh, uh, problem in pore diffusion is when the rate is a function of position x within the pellet. So, imagine this is the pore mouse. Okay, pore mouse. And here is the external side, the external surface of catalyst. Okay, here is your pore mouse, pore mouse, and the internal side of catalyst, okay, inside the pore. So if you look at the pore mouth, okay, and uh, the pore length, okay, X, plus dx, x, okay. The concentration of a reactant will change by the position of pore, okay. So, you will have different concentration here. You will have different concentration here. So, we need to consider the shell balance. So, yang ni kita panggil shell balance lah, okay. When we need to consider the mass transfer. So, average concentration is required in mass balance. Thus, the concentration profile, okay, CAX ni, will be solved in terms of concentration at the pellet surface. So, CA at position X. So, ini yang, as I said, the concentration will change with the position where the reaction occur at the pore, okay, inside the pore. A shell balance of single pore of length, ni length of pore, and, and diameter, diameter of pore, we can write it as this equation. So this is the shell balance, net flux in at x minus net flux out at x dx. So yang ni dia becomes uh, more complicated for this part. Okay, this part is actually very complicated. So that's why... Uh, you just need to know the theory and on how pore diffusion occur. Okay, kita takkan involved with the calculation. Okay, kalau uh, step one, yes, you need to know how to uh, calculate the mass transfer coefficient and by using this value, later you will insert it into this equation. Okay, external mass transfer reaction. Okay, kita break kejap for 3 minutes before we proceed with absorption uh, met, apa, absorption uh, isotherm and also the introduction to Lamour-Hishawood mechanism.
Okay, sorry ada masalah internet tadi. Right, so we continue. Okay, kita continue with uh, step 3. Okay, tadi step 2. Okay, now step 3. Hmm. Kita kena share balik. Jadi, Alright. Hmm. Okay. So for step three, step three, step four, step five. So for this track, we uh for this step, okay, we will relate it with the lamour Hisherwood mechanism and Illyridium mechanism. Actually, uh, lamour Hisherwood mechanism and Illyridium mechanism ni just occur in step four. Okay, but before we go further on step four, we need to know what is the step of absorption. So step three is absorption step. So in absorption step, we need to know how to write the absorption isotherm. Okay, it's a part of uh, Lamour-Hisherwood mechanism. Okay, so um, let's take a look at the introduction to the Lamour-Hisherwood kinetic. Okay, Lamo Hisherwood kinetic ni uh, to show how the surface reaction occur in step 4. Why it is important okay, to develop rate law for heterogeneous catalytic by postulate the catalytic mechanism and derive the rate law for various mechanism. So in order... To solve the design problem, you need to know what is the rate law equation. Okay, so kalau catalytic reaction, okay, for heterogeneous catalytic reaction, we cannot simply write uh, it's similar such as uh, homogeneous reaction. So kalau homogeneous reaction, we have the stoichiometric uh, balance ataupun stoichiometric equation on how the reaction occur. And then we can predict it is a uh, follow elementary as uh, the elementary rate law equation and the order of reaction is follow the stoichiometric coefficient or not. Okay, but for heterogeneous catalytic, we need to postulate the mechanism on how the reaction occurs. So postulate to we meaning that uh, we need to predict how the uh, reaction occur ataupun what is the steps of reaction and from that we need to derive the rate law okay based on the catalytic mechanism okay so uh, this is what we call uh, the heterogeneous catalytic rate law Okay, and then the mechanism of reaction, okay, before we uh, develop the rate law or derive the rate law equation, we need to know how to write the mechanism of reaction. Okay. So the mechanism consists of the absorption step. Okay, first the reaction must start with the absorption step, followed with the surface reaction and finally desorption steps. And the rate limiting. So from these three steps of reaction, adsorption, surface reaction and desorption, which one is rate limiting? Either adsorption is rate limiting, surface reaction rate limiting or desorption step is rate limiting. So we need to know which one is rate limiting. And then surface reaction, there are the dual mechanism. In surface reaction, uh, either it's follow lamour hisherwood kinetic or Illyridium kinetic. Uh, so, yang ni, yang uh, important part. Okay, similar for adsorption. How the adsorption occur? Uh, is it molecularly, molecular adsorption or atomic adsorption? Okay, then after we know what is the mechanism of reaction, Ataupun the steps of reaction and then we can predict uh, or derive the rate law based on the mechanism of reaction. So, sepatutnya this is the first step and this one the second step. Okay, after derive the rate law, 
okay, we need to evaluate the rate law par, uh, parameter and then uh, postulate the reaction mechanism and rate limiting. Ni pun terbalik. Sepatutnya, we need to postulate the reaction mechanism and rate limiting and then derive the rate law, evaluate the rate law and finally, reactor design. Okay, step ni terbalik. Okay, it must start from the uh, postulate the mechanism and rate limiting dulu. Barulah kita boleh uh, derive the rate law based on the mechanism. And when we have the rate law, we need to evaluate it okay, uh, through an experimental data and then design the reactor that's suitable for the reaction. Okay, all right. Then uh, we look at the absorption step. Okay, absorption uh, step. Okay, it, when we want to derive the absorption uh, apa tu, reaction, okay, ataupun rate of absorption, okay, during the uh, absorption step, we need to write the rate of absorption. So, what is the parameter that we need to consider uh, in the rate of absorption? Okay. So, we need to know what is the active site of catalyst. So, active site, so this is the uh, apa tu, acronym that we use to represent the part of catalyst. So, this is the acronym. So, active site, we label it as S. So, bukan capital S. Eh? So, when we write the reaction, Elakkan, avoid to use uh, S as a reactant or as a product. So that we will confuse with the active site. Okay. So S uh, represent, to represent the active site of catalyst. A here is the reactant. Uh, need example. Okay. For example, A, A here is the your reactant. A dot S. When the reactant attached to the active site or absorb on the active site, okay, the reactant that absorb on the active site, we represent it as A dot S. Okay, one unit of species A absorb on site S. Okay, S here is the active site. A here is the reactant. CT, okay, CT usually C is the concentration. Yang ni pun actually. Uh, represent the concentration, total concentration, okay, total molar concentration of active site per unit mass of catalyst. So, CT is uh, referring to the total concentration of active site as here, okay, total concentration of this. CV, V ni vacant site. Okay, molar concentration of vacant site. Okay, vacant site ni vacant active site maksudnya. Okay, uh, so CT ni including the concentration of species that absorb on active site and also the concentration of vacant site. So CT equal to the concentration of the species CIS ni. Any species, either it is A ke B ke, plus CV. Okay, so CT. Okay, PI, partial pressure of species I. Any species, reactant ke, product ke, in gas phase. So usually, heterogeneous catalytic reaction, the phase of reaction is in gas phase. So for gas phase reaction, we, pre we represent it as a partial pressure. Bila dia attach to the active site, okay, when the reactant attach to the active site, then we can represent it in terms of concentration. Okay. For those species that not absorb on the active site, we represent it in terms of partial pressure. Okay. So, bila dia dah uh, absorb on the active site, we write it in terms of concentration, CIS. I need any species. Okay, surface concentration of sites occupied by species. And this is the unit, gram mole per gram catalyst. 
Okay, so similar for the concentration of vacant site, semua per unit mass of catalyst. Okay, based on the mass of catalyst. <coughs> okay, so the first step is uh, absorption isotherm. Okay, example, example one, absorption of A on a site S is represented by, so A here is your reactant. This is the reactant A as active site. Okay, active site. Here is the active site S. So when this reactant A absorb on the active site, it will become A dot S. And this is how absorption occur. Okay, reversible absorption reaction. Okay, absorption must be uh, the absorption of reactant on the active site must be in reversible reaction. So for this case, the site balance, okay, site balance for this reaction, absorption reaction is CT equal to CV plus CAS. CT con total concentration of uh, active site. CV vacant site, yeah, yang ni vacant site because it's not attached to any species. CAS, concentration of reactant that absorb on the active site. So that's why dia macam ni. Okay. Tapi CV ni uh, represent all the active site. Tak kira lah dia ada dua ke, tiga ke. Okay, tapi they represent all active site, CV. Okay, so we can compare it, the first figure dengan second figure. Okay, for the second figure, we have two reactant. Okay, absorption of A and B on site S is represented by, so A, reactant A, absorb on this active site, reactant B, absorb on this active site. And the other is vacant site. So we have this vacant site. This one is vacant site. So this is how the absorption reaction occur. Okay, both uh, species A and species B absorb as a reversible reaction. Reversible absorption reaction. A plus S to produce A dot S and B plus S to produce B dot S. And the site balance, CT, okay, total concentration, equal to CV. Again, even though there are two other vacant sites, tapi we represent it as a CV. Sebab CV ni, uh, for all the concentration for all the vacant active site. Plus CAS and CVS. Okay, ha, jangan pula tulis dua CV. So, totally wrong. Okay. So, this is based on figure. Tapi, the actual uh, reaction, yang ni just uh, for this figure and this figure ni just nak you imagine how the absorption occur, how the uh, reactant uh, absorb on the active site. Okay. But not uh, for the calculation. Kita tak consider pun for the calculation. But what you need to know is how to write the site balance. Okay. okay. Then we need to know either the absorption ni occur uh, in terms of molecule or in terms of atom. Okay, so isotherm, what is the isotherm? So you need, you dah belajar pun uh, in previous part. Okay, isotherm is the amount of gas absorbed on a solid at different pressure, but at one temperature. A model system was proposed then. The isotherm obtained from the model is compared with the experimental data shown on the curve. So yeah, macam like saya cakap tadi lah. After we have the mechanism of reaction, we come out with the model rate law equation. And we need to uh, evaluate it with the experimental data. 
okay, verify it with the experimental data. So if the curve predicted by the model agrees with the experimental data, the model may describe what is occurring physically in the real system. Okay, then how the adsorption occur? Okay, the former is called molecular or non-dissociated adsorption. So this is how desorption occurs. So this one is very important, these two statements. The molecular adsorption or non-dissociated adsorption. Okay, the same uh, definition. Okay, non-dissociated uh, adsorption or molecular desorption. The gas molecule adsorb as molecule. Okay, for example, carbon monoxide here they absorb on the active side as CO dot S. Okay. And the other type of desorption is dissociative adsorption. Okay. Dissociative adsorption. Uh, for example, again, carbon monoxide, tapi uh, this carbon monoxide will adsorb on the active site as an atom. Therefore, the active site required for the adsorption to occur is 2. Okay. Sebab they adsorb as an atom as a carbon and as a as an oxygen therefore the active site required is 2 okay kalau uh, adsorb as molecule the active site required only 1 so yang ni 2 because it will produce c dot s plus o dot s okay so these two is important non dissociative and dissociative so, kalau dalam soalan, you you should aware lah either molecular adsorption or dissociative adsorption. Okay. It is depend on the surface. The equation can be considered as an elementary reaction in order to determine the rate law. Okay, when we have this uh, apa, stoichiometry equation, we can consider ataupun make an assumption that the reaction is elementary. Okay. The equation can be considered as elementary reaction in order to determine the rate law. Okay. Rate of attachment, molecule adsorb and vacant site, the rate is proportional to the concentration of vacant site. Rate of detachment, detachment of molecule from the surface, the rate is proportional to the concentration of site occupied by molecule by molecules. Uh, so yeah, need the, just a definition. What is the rate of attachment and rate of detachment? And net rate of adsorption equal to rate of attachment to the surface minus rate of detachment from the surface. This is to show you how to write the rate of adsorption. But okay, if you look at this uh, stoichiometry equation, should be no problem because the reaction is a reversible reaction. So you should uh, know how to write the rate law equation for reversible reaction. You have learned it in CHE502 reaction engineering one. So should be no problem for you to write the rate law equation uh, when the reaction is reversible. Okay. That assumption to obtain the Lamour uh, isotherm, surface of catalyst, and the adsorption system. Okay, uh, so untuk net rate ni, rate, so uh, rate of reversible reaction. So yang ni tak ada masalah lah. Okay, semua boleh dah, boleh buat sebab semua dah, Lulus uh, reaction engineering one. So you should know on how to write the rate of reversible reaction. Okay. So consider the absorption of carbon monoxide molecule. Oh, so uh, this is the theoretical part. Yani you can read on your own. Okay. Macam mana berlaku collision rate to semua. So this is just a theoretical Okay, kita nak tahu, okay, the last part. Thus, the rate of attachment to the surface is proportional to the partial pressure and the concentration of 
vacant site. Okay, saya tak nak tunjuk step by step on how to write the net rate of absorption. No need to write rate of attachment. No need to write rate of detachment. The most important part is the net rate of absorption. Okay, so this is the stoichiometric equation for the reaction. Okay, CO plus S reversible reaction CO dot S. Okay, then this is the net rate of absorption. RA referring to the reactant A because here we uh, carbon monoxide ni we can write it in terms of reactant A. Okay, S the active site, active site. Uh, the concentration is CV, okay, and then CO dot S. Concentration dia C, CO dot S. Tapi CI dot S. Okay, so AD here referring to the absorption. Okay, RAD, so usually I will write it as, uh, not uh, as a capital uh, letter lah. RAD macam ni pun okay to represent the absorption reaction. So RAD equal to okay, rate uh, for forward reaction KA you need to represent the uh, again to represent the absorption step. Side. Internet problem lagi. Okay. Okay, continue balik. PCO, CV. Ni datang dari mana? Okay, previous equation yang ni. Okay, saya so tulis balik dia punya ni CO plus S reversible reaction CO dot S. Okay, so from here based on this equation, okay, RAD equal to KAD PCO. CO here we write it in terms of its partial pressure PCO. Vacant side CV okay, minus Reversible reaction K A D K K A D ataupun nak senang lagi just write it as a K one or K two K forward K backward lagi senang okay and then yang ni in terms of concentration C C O dot S okay because this is the adsorbed species. So for the adsorbed species, we write it in terms of its concentration. Okay. And then from here, so this is based on this equation. Adsorption equilibrium constant. So similar what you have learned in reaction engineering one. So, uh, equilibrium rate constant equal to K forward divide with K backward. So, we can simplify this uh, equation, okay, this rate of absorption as this one. Okay, dia dah simplify kan. Okay, paling mudah. Okay, yang lain, rate of attachment, rate of detachment, step by step tu tak payah. Terus dia tulis uh, net rate of Absorption, okay. Net rate, net rate. Okay, then, ah, yeah, ni just a definition. Okay, then write the side balance. So you need side balance only for the absorption step. Okay, side balance. How to determine the side balance? Okay, side balance required, yang ni CT equal to CV plus C, CO dot S because only uh, CO absorb on the 
at this side. Then at equilibrium, okay, at equilibrium, actually at equilibrium, negative, uh, not, not negative lah. Um, R A D rate of absorption equal to zero at equilibrium. Okay, so from previous equation at equilibrium, R A D equal to zero. So K A automatically uh, equal to zero. Then the term in the bracket also equal to zero. So when this term equal to zero, we can rearrange for CCO. Rearrange for CCO dot S. Okay, that's why dapat this equation. Okay. So solve C -E -C -C -O -S in terms of constant and partial pressure. Thus, okay, yang ni, CV ni, we need to eliminate this term. So how to eliminate this term? Here, okay. C, C, O dot S equal to K, A, P, A, C, V, P, C, O. Insert into this equation, yang ni substitute it into here. Therefore, C, T equal to C, V plus K, A, C, V, P, C, O. Okay, ganti masuk. And then, rearrange for CV. Okay, rearrange for CV. Later, CV tu, you need to substitute it into uh, this uh, apa? Um, equation. Okay, Equilibri uh, absorption equation. Absorption isotherm. Then, you will get it as this equation. Okay, sebenarnya saya ada file lain uh, yang saya nak tunjuk. Okay, like untuk uh, lebih clear on how to derive the absorption isotherm. Okay, so this is step by step on how you can uh, derive the absorption isotherm. Okay. The same example because the apa tu the reaction in gas phase, so that's why it to list gas here. Okay, S active site CO dot S. Okay, CO dot S. Okay, then Allah. Rate law. Okay, rate law. Rate of absorption. RAD equal to KAD PCOCV minus CCO dot S. So, saya terus je divide it with the equilibrium rate constant. Okay. Because we already know how to write the uh, rate law for reversible. So, kita terus je tulis after we simplify the uh, equation. Yeah. Doktor ada tunjuk uh, slide lain ke doktor? Oh, ya ke? Lupa, lupa. Tadi, ah uh -uh. uh -uh. Uh, hmm. Saya bukan tunjuk yeah, slide okay. lain. Saya tunjuk ni sekejap. Saya uh, stop sharing. Saya tunjuk PDF file kejap. Saya share lagi yang lain. Uh, uh, okay, boleh nampak? Nampak, Doktor. Uh, okay. So, the same reaction. Okay, tapi ni saya tunjuk uh, lagi clear. Step by step compare dalam slide tadi. Okay. Uh, so nanti saya sharekan juga file ni dalam uh, Microsoft Team. Okay, so you boleh nampak step by step on how to derive the absorption isotherm. Okay, so uh, side balance. Okay, sama je dengan yang tadi. Cuma ini lagi details lah on how to derive the equation. So side balance CT equal to CV plus C. O dot S, okay, based on this uh, stoichiometry equation. At equilibrium, okay, kalau dalam nota tadi saya tak ada pun tulis yang ni kan, saya tambah sendiri. So, this is the details. At equilibrium, negative RAD equal to zero. So, when this equation, equation one equal to zero, therefore, this KAD, yang ni, 
automatically equal to zero. And the term inside the bracket also equal to zero. Okay. And then uh, rearrange. Okay, rearrange for uh, the term that absorb on the active side, which is CO. Okay, rearrange for the term that uh, absorb on the active side, CCO.S. You will get this equation. Okay. Next, you want to eliminate this term. Okay, to eliminate CV, insert question 3 into 2. Question 2 yang ni, side balance. Okay, kena masukkan balik dalam side balance. Okay, then what happened to the side balance? CT equal to CV plus KA, PCO, CV. And then, simplify kan, sebab ada CV here, and here, okay, ingat uh, in previous one, we need to eliminate CV. So, that's why after you substitute this equation into the side balance, we need to rearrange for CV. Dapatkan CV equation. Okay, CV equal to, uh, yang ni, okay, rearrange, you will get it as equation for, and then insert equation 4 into equation 3. Equation 3 tadi. Kejap, bos. Dulu kejap, tengah lecture. 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 Tengah Video, video. Ah, video yang dia kerat-kerat kita dekat Roro. Oh, okey, okey, okey. Nanti try tanya. Tanya kalau dia. Nak ni cakap nak urgent. Kita ah. letak video lain sebelum tu. Tak ada. Video tak yang. Ada, tapi korporat, korporat uh. dia tak tak share. Dia dah share ke belum dekat college video tu? Aku tak sure. Tapi nanti kalau ada bagi punya Roro lah nak buat dalam video kita. Masukkan. Ah, ha, okey, okey. Amat. Mak tak bagi weh, Amat tak bagi apa boleh sekolah. Mana boleh tahu pun ni cakap dengan Amat. Ha, tak tahu. Tak tahu. Okay, 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 alright. Okay, okay, alright. Okay, continue balik. Uh, okay, so, bila dah dapat this equation, CV equation ni insert back into equation 3 tadi sebab we want uh, to eliminate CV kan. So, substitute this CV term ni dengan this equation. Okay, dapatlah as this equation. So, this equation lah what we call it uh, absorption isotherm. Okay, uh, so you kena understand on how to eliminate CV on how to write the, apa tu, total side balance because later, Bila kita dah combine, we, we uh, after you know what is the Lamoisian wood kinetic, what is the Iliridial kinetic, later we want to derive the overall rate, this similar step, okay, we will use a similar step on how to write the rate law equation, okay. So, yang ni baru part yang absorption isotherm sahaja. So, this is the absorption isotherm equation when the uh, apa tu reactant absorb as molecule okay ataupun molecular desorption or eh, molecular dissociation or uh, non dissociative uh, absorption okay and then next okay saya tak perlu tunjuk nota lah yang nota tu dia tak ni lawat berkelip Hmm. Dah berkelip pula. Uh. Okay. Hmm. Sekejap eh. Kita nak, saya nak tunjuk yang last je. Last part uh, untuk absorption tu.
Okey, dia dah tak berkelip dah. Okey, so actually this one also similar with uh, the notes. Okey, cuma saya tunjuk uh, more detail. Okey, more detail on how to derive the equation. Okey, so this is last part for today punya lecture. Right. Yang ni for dissociative absorption. What is a dissociative absorption? The molecule uh, reactant but absorbing as atom. Okay. So you have the carbon monoxide. So kalau dia absorb as an atom, we need to vacant site for the reaction to occur ataupun for the absorption reaction to occur. So, CO plus 2S, reversible reaction C dot S plus O dot S and this is the rate of absorption. Okay, rate of absorption. Again, we assume it is elementary. So, RAD equal to, uh, so this is how you write the reversible reaction rate law equation. So, Ka in bracket, okay, partial pressure of CO, CV square because uh, it's required to vacant site, okay, minus C, C, S, because the exot species, we write it in terms of concentration. Okay, these two exot species, we write it in terms of concentration. And then divide it with uh, equilibrium rate constant. Okay, and then side balance. Okay, based on this relation, C, T equal to C, V plus the exot uh, species. Okay, concentration of the exot species, C, C dot S and C, O dot S. So, this is the equation 1 is the rate law, equation 2 is side balance. Okay, at equilibrium, rate of absorption equal to 0. So, automatically, this term equal to 0, KAD, rate of uh, rate constant, uh, absorption rate constant equal to 0. So, the term in bracket also equal to zero. And then, rearrange, rearrange, okay, for the exot species, Ka, P, C, O, C, V, square. Okay, now we have two exot species. Okay, let's assume that the concentration of these two exot species is similar. Okay, concentration of oxygen and concentration of carbon is similar. Okay. Therefore, we can uh, replace the term C, C dot S, the concentration of uh, C dot S as C, O dot S. So that's why they jadi C, O dot S square because this concentration is similar. So it will produce equation Okay, so dari sini, okay, from here again, we want to eliminate term CV here. So yang ni, this is uh, the absorption isotherm for absorption of uh, oxygen. Tapi it's in terms of CV. So we want to eliminate CV. Okay, so from side balance, again, Okay, side balance, we uh, substitute, okay, mana side balance tadi, cc dot s ni tadi plus co dot s and we know that the concentration of c dot s similar to co dot s, so ganti masuk, jadilah macam ni, dua co dot s. Okay, and then, CO dot S equal to this one, equation 4. Tapi yang ni square, CO dot S square. So, uh, square root kan lah. Okay, ha, dah dilah macam ni. Equation 6. So, equation 6 insert into equation 5. 
Dapatlah, this is the side balance. The new side balance equation. Okay. That's after that, rearrange. Rearrange for CV. Okay. And then, dapat new equation for CV. Insert back into the absorption isotherm of O equation. Rapatlah. So, this is the final equation. Okay. So, you need to, uh, apa tu, understand step by step how we can solve the absorption isotherm. So, later, it becomes more complicated than this when you derive the overall rate law equation. So after this, I will share this file and I will try to find the video, explanation video on how to derive the absorption isotherm. Okay. Any question untuk yang ni? Before we end the class. Tak ada soalan. So far, okay, good middle. Ha? Huh? So far, okay, good middle. So far, okay, eh? So, after this, uh, saya akan sharekan video tu. And hopefully, uh, next class, okay, next class, uh, face to face, hybrid lah, okay? Because ada some of you yang memang tak boleh face to face. Uh, kita akan, uh, apa? Tengok untuk part uh, surface reaction. Okay, the most important part is surface reaction. Okay, so kalau you tak tahu on how to write the absorption isotherm ni, ah, uh, itu nanti later be, it becomes more complicated lah, lagi susah untuk nak faham bila kita dah buat uh, apa surface reaction. Okay, sebab surface reaction lagi panjang dan lagi complicated compare to the absorption step ni. Okay. So, kalau tak ada any question, so that's all for today. Okay. So, thank you uh, for medium, medium, your... Medium, medium. Yeah. Yang ah, PDF tu medium ada attach dekat MS team ke Lepas ni, lepas ni saya akan attach dekat MS team. Thank you, Edda. Okay. okay. So that's all for today. Thank you. And we meet again on Thursday. Okay. So, Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Fahim tak ada je sebelum tu. Fahim, saya nak cari Fahim. Fahim ada. Fahim, sekejap saya nak uh, message awak eh. Saya WhatsApp awak. Balas dekat WhatsApp.